Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and I have something to confess. I have a little bit of a problem. I see metallic art supplies, and I fall in love with them, I buy them, and then I never use them. So I'm going to change that. Today, I am going to put my metallic art supplies to good use, all of them. And before I start, I do want to say I am not the first person to do a challenge like this. Um, this challenge of using all of your art supply in one particular color or in one particular theme really originated with drawing with waffles she has a whole bunch of videos where she takes one particular color and gets every art supply that she has in that color and creates an artwork with it i'm also not the only one to do this variation where i'm just using all my metallic art supplies cat Vok also has a video where she does this which i discovered when i was looking to see if other people had done this challenge but i really wanted to use my metallic art supply so i thought that this would just be a really fun way to do it i will link their videos in the description below if you want to see them i'm sure that you have heard of them if you're at this channel they they're definitely bigger youtubers than i am and so i'm sure if you're on my channel you have heard of them in the past and if not you will love their videos so i will link them in the description below what you're seeing me do here is go through all my art supplies and try and dig out all of my metallic art supplies which are scattered every everywhere. And this is going to be a fun and interesting challenge because I rarely ever use them to begin with besides for accenting. So to do a full piece in it, it's going to be interesting. And here is what I came up with. Yes, that is a unicorn Easter basket that I put them all in because I am a child. <laughs> Actually, I'm just spoiled and I love unicorns and my husband buys me Easter baskets. So yeah, I could barely fit them all in there. So let's see what we can do. I am swatching them all on some black paper. I'm starting off with my markers. I have various brands. I will try and link everything in the description below because it's kind of hard to list everything. But so far you're seeing some acrylic markers from Liquitex and some Faber Castell pit pens. And then later on, I will also be swatching some, like I've never seen them anywhere else. They're called Definity, I think, or something like that. You'll see those on a different page. Now I am working on swatching my pencils. I have some Faber Castell, some Prismacolor, some some Blick, some watercolor pencils, and I'm not really liking how the watercolor pencils wash out. So I think when I use those, I will just be using them dry. And here's the infinity markers I was telling you about. I love these. I'm having a hard time finding them online again. My husband bought me these years ago. I'm going to have to see if I can find them so I can link them for you, but I'm having a difficult time. So there's a few things I may not be able to link for you. And these are inks by Windsor & Newton. And then there is some acrylics. I had some golden acrylics, some iridescent golden, high flow. And then I think the other one was, I can't remember what the other one was, but it was golden. And then there was also some plaid color shifting craft acrylics. And now I am moving on to my watercolors. There's some Yasutomo watercolors and some Kiritake ones, the, the gem, the pearl, and the starry colors which are beautiful. I got those in a three pack. And then I have some Arteza metallic gouache. And I'm going to, I think that those are obviously the most opaque of the, the supplies so far. Then I am doing my gel pens, which are clearly dying. They're not doing very well. And here are the swatches. So I had noticed that mostly my pens and the gouache were the most opaque. The pencils are kind of in between and the watercolors obviously were more transparent. I'm going to try and use that to my advantage so that I can kind of show some sort of value system because it's hard to get values with all these, these bright, shiny colors. So I'm going to use the transparency or opacity of my supplies to my advantage. And I'm using black paper because when I think of metallic, I think of black paper. I am a 90s kid. I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s when gel pens were everything. And we always worked on black paper when we played with our gel pens. And so that's what that made me think of. So I'm using Faber-Castell mixed media paper. I had gotten this paper for free from Cult Pens, I believe, on a promotion. I had bought a different art supply and I got this for free. It was a pad of paper for free. And this is actually my first time using this paper. So I wanted to put this paper to good use as well. 
And I have it taped down because I am going to be using mixed media. Obviously there's gonna be watercolor, so I just wanna make sure it doesn't buckle too much because I have never used the paper before, so I didn't know how much it would buckle. I'm starting out with my gouache because as I said, that's gonna be more opaque. Normally I would start with the background first, but I really wanted to make sure that I got my dog in really like opaquely because I want him to stand out. And what I am doing is a portrait of my dog Max as a unicorn because he is magical AF <laughs> and he knows it and he has an attitude. And so that's why you will see a swear word at the bottom. I put an asterisk where the eye goes, so hopefully that's censored enough, but I think you can kind of crack the code and tell what that word is. That is my Chihuahua's favorite word. Yes, I am weird, and I give my dogs personality, and they even have voices, and they have favorite words, but don't judge me. I kind of made sure that I left the outlines where they were. I left them blank so that I could go back in later on. I do have a black shimmery marker that I'm going to be able to use, which was a score and a half to find. Like, I'm really excited that I had at least one black shimmery art supply so that I could do the outlines. And when I initially started this, I started it as a concept sketch in my sketchbook. I sketched him from life, and then, of course, I added the horn in from imagination. And then I scanned him in so that I could use my tablet and do use GIMP to create my outline. So I just traced over him with my tablet so that I could get my graphic outline of him. And then added the circle in digitally because I'm not going to freehand a circle. And... Then I added lettering, and when I added the lettering, I discovered that the word magical would interfere with his horn, so I switched him around, so now he's facing the opposite direction than he was originally, but it ended up working out. And I transferred it to my black paper, I printed it out, and then like just put some white charcoal on the back of the paper and transferred it to my black paper that way. I probably should have used a darker charcoal color or a darker, like maybe a gray or something, because it did get kind of powdery, but I wanted you to be able to see the outline. So I used white and I was able to wipe away most of the residual powder after. So now you're seeing me go in with my infinity markers. These are so much fun. My husband bought these for me forever ago and I'm hoping I can find more online because those were almost as opaque as the gouache. I find that the pens are quite opaque. The markers are quite opaque and then obviously the watercolor was gonna be a little bit more transparent and so i'm using the most opaque stuff on the dog and the circle because i want it to stand out and then in the background i used my watercolors to kind of get that dreamy effect and some of my acrylics as well because they were actually kind of transparent but they were also fun to use on top of things to kind of buff them up a little bit especially those color changing ones and here I am with that black infinity pen, which is actually a metallic pen. I was so excited about that. Then I'm going to come in with my Liquitex acrylic markers. And I have silver and gold in those. Originally, I was going to put the word I'm in silver, but I didn't like the way it showed up. So I did everything in gold and then I came back with silver. And then I'm coming through with my pit pens to kind of buff things up and make them stand out. That's actually like silver and the scan it ends up looking white, but it's just so pretty. This really helped everything pop. And I had a few doubles of things. I'm going to mention that I did have a few doubles of these art supplies. I didn't bring the doubles in because what was the point in me using two of the same silver pen? Like it was, the, you know, I didn't bring those in. And then I'm coming through with my favorite Castell to fill out that fun little word at the bottom. And I want to mention that all the supplies that I haven't used yet are on the left, and then I move them to the right when I'm done using them. You may see me pull from the right every once in a while, though, to reuse some of the supplies. But this way, I could keep track of what I've already used so that I could make sure I used everything. And so really i wanted him and the words to stand out the most and then kind of the bones and the stars and then in the background there's that fun smoky effect with some of my acrylics and watercolors and it ended up working out really well like it ended up working out the way i was hoping with having those opaque things be obviously 
where the center of interest is and then kind of get that dreamy effect with the watercolors. Like I felt like I was actually able to use these supplies to their full potential. Other than the watercolor pencils, which like I said, I didn't end up watering down. I'm gonna have to try those on white paper and see if I like them watered down better on white paper. I really didn't like the way the swatches were. They worked great without water though. So I did end up using them. I did end up using all my supplies. Even if it was just for little accents or creating little stars in the back, like you'll see me use some of the pencils and some of the gel pens later on to create some kind of almost like a stippling effect to get some stars in the background. But I did end up using each thing. Some things didn't show up as well as others, but I used them. And I think all in all, it was like 110 art supplies that I used. So it's kind of madness, but it was a lot of fun. Like it was such a great mixed media project. So if you have a bunch of metallic art supplies laying around, I suggest you try them out and just do something magical. And I apologize that my head keeps poking in, but I am human and I exist, so my presence will be known on my videos every once in a while, other than my hand. It's hard to film at certain angles and to get into certain details without kind of getting in the way every once in a while, but I tried to cut out as much as I could if it was like blocking anything. But yeah, so... This was, I just love this. I want to, I think I want to do all my pets now. Like I have ideas for my other pets as well. And this just fits his personality so well because he's 13 years old. He's fat and wrinkly and happy. And, but he does have a little bit of an attitude and he thinks that he is just, you know, it. He thinks he's the man and he kind of is. Like he really, really is. So I thought this was a fun little tribute to him and all the magic that he brings to my life. Clearly, I've had some caffeine today, so I apologize if I'm acting a little weird. But this is kind of a different project for me than what you usually see on my channel. I do like to do illustrative work. I don't do it as much as I should or as much as I would like, so I'll probably be doing more in the future. So let me know if you like this kind of style every once in a while. I know I tend towards realism, but I can do different styles on my channel as well as that if that's something you're interested in. Look how shiny it is. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. This was so much fun. I can't even like I'm so glad I did this and I now I know of other ways to use these supplies as well and other artwork. And here is the scan of it. I hope that you liked this video. It was just kind of a fun little way to play around. I definitely recommend trying this and I might do other challenges in the future. I don't do them a whole lot, but this definitely was fun and worth it because I needed to use these art supplies that have been laying around. So let me know if you like this video and if you'd like to see more like it, I will see you next time. Bye. Here is this week's artwork of the week. For more information on this piece or to purchase it directly, follow the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.